Okay, I'm sorry. Good afternoon and welcome to the Society of Wetland Scientists, seventh webinar of 2021, entitled Floating Wetlands in Pakistan, which will be presented by Dr. Mohammed Afsal and assisted by Dr. Mohammed Arslan. My name is Louis Mantini and I'm pleased to moderate this webinar. Um, please advance the slide. For those of you who may not be familiar with our SWS webinar series, our monthly webinars are usually held on the third Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As you can see on this listing of our up upcoming webinars, we have both SWS webinar series in English and a quarterly Spanish webinar, both of which are open to members and non-members alike. Webinars are also posted to YouTube for free viewing, and we currently have an amazing library of over 60 different webinars. Another expansion of the webinar program is the development of wetland in interviews, and make sure you keep those on your radar. Please advance. We're proud to recognize our 2021 SWS webinar series sponsors. And first we have the Whittington Group, which is a natural resource consulting firm that balances regulatory compliance with sound ecological management. And HDR, who specialize in engineering, architecture, environmental and construction services, creating an unshakable foundation for progress with their multidisciplinary teams of scientists, economics, economists, builders, analysts, and artists. You can find their information at the websites listed above. We also have in situ, whose monitoring equipment and software works together to make it easier and more cost-effective to collect, access, and manage data on water levels, water quality, water flow, and more. Delta Land Services, which is an environmental restoration, mitigation, and land management company, providing complete and comprehensive mitigation services to both private and public industry throughout the Gulf Coast region. And lastly, but not least, WildNote, which is a field data collection app for environmental professionals that streamlines, streamlines the process of collecting, managing, and reporting environmental data so you can work smarter, not harder. Please visit, like, and follow our West SWS webinar sponsors. Please advance. Since January 2018, the SWS Webinar Series Committee has worked to have our SWS webinars pre-approved by the Professional Certification Program to count for continuing education credits that can be applied to your professional wetland scientist certification or renewal. The webinar today has been pre-approved for SWS TCP educational credit. Participants, participation certificates for watching the webinar in its entirely, entirety are available through an automated process. You will receive an email from Su Susanna Hogendorn of the SWS National Office about one day after the webinar. Please check your spam or junk folder if you do, do not see it. These certificates are free to webinar or to SWR members, SWS members, and participation certificates are also available for those who watch webinar recordings, which can be found on our events calendar page or YouTube channel. And these uh, recordings are complete with uh, multilingual captions. So a uh, few house item, housekeeping items uh, before we move on. First, the general format for today's webinar will be a 45 minute presentation by our speaker, followed by approximately 15 minutes of questions and answers. Secondly, all, all attendees will be muted for the duration of the webinar and all questions by the attendees must be asked with the Q&A button shown here. Do not use the chat button, which is reserved for technical difficulties, should you have them, and it will be monitored by SWS staff. At any time during the presentation, you can type your questions in the Q&A window. Participate, and in the, once in the window, the participants may also upvote questions that they'd like to see answered first. And finally, a survey will be sent to you via email from Zoom one day after the webinar. Please complete the survey to give us feedback about today's webinar and the webinar series program. We're constantly striving to improve the series and please indicate if you're interesting, interested in giving a future SWS webinar because we're very interested in what you have to share. So it is my distinct pleasure 
To introduce our speaker today, Dr. Mohamed Afsal is a principal scientist and director of an environmental monitoring laboratory with over 22 years of experience in devising low-cost, self-sustaining, and environmentally environment-friendly technologies for the remediation of pollution, pollution, polluted soil, and wastewater. After extension, extensive research and development, the innovative technology of floating treatment wetlands was developed and successfully applied in the industry to treat wastewater. Floating treatment wetlands are nature-based solutions aimed to provide low-cost wastewater treatment options for communities. The technology has been applied in the wastewater stabilization ponds of Faisalabad, in the pits of oil and gas development company limited, Toyota car wash stations, and at other industries such as Interloop Limited and Hadari Beverages. The laboratory has been awarded several national and international grants to develop the technology for wastewater treatment, such as the gold medal by Pakistan's Academy of Sciences, the National Institute of Biotechnology, and Genetic, Genetic Engineering's Best Scientist of the Year, the Higher Education Commission of Pakistan's Best Publication Award, and Research Productivity Awards by Pakistan's Council for Science and Technology. Also, has published 77 research articles in peer-reviewed journals with a total impact factor of 285 and a citation of 4,100. Among them, two publications in Nature Journals as a first and corresponding author. And an example, the Journals of Nature Sustainability and NPJ Clean Water. So, without further ado, I would like to ha um, hand over the controls to Afsal. Welcome, Afsal. You may speak, Afsal. Sir, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon to the people of USA and Canada. And good evening to the people of Europe and Asia. First, I am very much thankful to the Mr. Royce for my detailed introduction and to the Secretary of Atlantic Scientist and the organizer of this event for providing me an opportunity to present our work on this great forum of the society. I am also very much thankful to Bin Lee Page, Bin Lee Page, past president of the society. Bin Lee Page introduced me to the society and also helped me to get the membership of the society. The topic of today's talk is floating wetland in Pakistan. I, Muhammad Afzal, is working at National Institute for Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering, Faisalabad, Pakistan. And Mr. Muhammad Arslan, my partner in this, in this presentation, is working at University of Alberta, Canada. Before joining University of Alberta, Mr. Slans worked in Nibji on the development and application of wetlands in Pakistan. And still, Mohammed Slan is involved in these projects. Next, please. Climate change and rapid population growth have intensified water shortage in many countries. Pakistan has also acute water shortage and it is one of the major threats to Pakistan's stability. On the other side, clean water is used and discharged as a waste without any treatment. Wastewater without, without any treatment discharge degrade the, degrades the quality of ground and surface water. Surface water, canal water, river water, our dams water. 
we are contaminating them due to the discharge of untreated wastewater. More than 90% wastewater is, is discharged without any treatment. This, this contaminated water use contribute to 80% of diseases and 40% of deaths in Pakistan. Untreated wastewater discharge is mainly due to very high, very high capital install and uh, capital cost as well installation and operational cost of the conventional wastewater treatment plants. Next, please. Conventional technology are not only expensive but also technically difficult to apply in Pakistan for the treatment of wastewater. As these technology required highly experienced engineered and very expensive chemicals and the imported their spare parts and highly expensive electricity. All these things, high, very high capital cost, high, 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 high turning and operational cost make this conventional technology not applicable in Pakistan. Therefore, most of the government as well as private organizations discharge their wastewater in the environment. The development of a low cost, efficient, and self-sustaining. Self-sustaining means with minimum operational and maintenance cost. Air environment friendly in this technology is required for the remediation and reuse of wastewater. Because self-sustaining is important because once if a government or private organization installs, then it is, it is operational and maintenance cost in the service. Floating treatment wetlands are innovative approach in Pakistan for pollution, for water pollution management. Here, floating mats. sustain and support plants and keeps plants growth in control. The growth are kept in a specific area. It does not spread in the whole the pond. Roots grow into the water and these roots remove the contaminants from the wastewater by different physical, chemical, and biological process. Next, please. On the roots as well as on the mat, biofilm was developed. This biofilm contains bacteria, many microorganisms, mainly bacteria and fungi. And their population can increase to 10 million per gram of the root. Due to this high concentration of microbes and the biofilm on the roots, these roots act as biofilter. When wastewater passes through these roots, organic and inorganic pollutants are attached at the surface of the roots. The microorganism which colonize on these roots degrade the organic pollutants such as drug residues, iron grease, detergents, dyes, and other pollutants. So all the organic pollutants which are there are degraded by the microorganism. Therefore, the roots are act as biofilter. Whereas in the organic pollutants such as heavy metals and nutrients are taken up by the plants. These are absorbed on, in the roots and then transported into the shoot. And most importantly, these roots enhance the sedimentation. Both organic and inorganic pollutants are settled at the bottom of the pond. In this way, floating wetlands removes both the organic and inorganic pollutants from the wastewater. And organic are mainly by the biofilm developed on the roots 
of the plants. Next, please. Floating treatment wetlands is the only practical approach in Pakistan for wastewater treatment and reuse because it is a low cost technology. We just need a floating mat and the plants. Its design is very simple. Its operation and maintenance is very simple. Maintenance means operation, means just you need a gardener which harvests the plants after every two to three months. This is the only its maintenance cost. Yeah, that you need a person, you need a gardener which harvests the plants after every two to three months. It is self sustainable. Plants use the sunlight and nutrients from the wastewater and grow. And their roots below the mat move the contaminants from the wastewater. It increases the beauty of the site. It increases the biodiversity. It provides clean water. It provides green space. And most importantly, it improves air quality. Improve air quality by using carbon dioxide gas and, and producing oxygen in the environment. Same energy and chemicals as here is no need, no use of chemicals and energy. Plants use sunlight for their growth. And the water can be reused. Next, please. At Nibji, we screened the plants, we selected the plants. For this purpose, we collected the plants from the drains and the ponds, which can grow hydroponically in the water, such a way without soil. We need the plants which can grow in the water without soil. These are the wetland plants we collected then. Then they are associated rhizobacteria, which, which colonize on the roots, and endophytic bacteria, which colonize inside the root and shoot were isolated and characterized. They were characterized for the degradation of specific pollutants for their plant growth promoting activities. Then we also found that when we use these plants and bacteria in partnership, in combination, they are more efficient to remove the contaminants from the wastewater, then they are individually used. When these plants and bacteria are used in combination, more effective as compared to their individual use. Next, please. We performed many lab scale and pilot scale studies at NIPG. In the first study, we just take a plastic tank take a mat, make the hole, put the plants, such a way their roots grow in the water. And our this work was published in ecology engineering. Then we performed many pilot scale studies to select the plants, to select the bacteria, and select their combination for the maximum remediation of wastewater. Here you can see the pragmatic plant grow at Nibji. And here is a lot of root system. This extensive root system also grows in the wastewater and the root length can be increased up to 10 feet. Then these roots act as a biofilters and remove the contaminants from the wastewater. Next, please. The main part the main component of the floating treatment wetland is the mat, is the floating mat. We designed it at Nibji. Then we fabricated it using polystyrene. It is used as insulator in the, in the buildings. In the construction of building, this material is used as insulator. We make the hole, protein hole, in this six and four feet mats at equal distance 
then also make four insert four plastic pipe to connect these mat with each other and also cover the corners of the mat with aluminum foil to protect these from the sunlight then we also check its buoyancy put in the water and we observe that it can tolerate soil as well as the plants this locally made mat floating mat is about 500 times less expensive than the floating mat available in the international market and our this work make it possible to apply this technology in pakistan because this is the main material floating mat and we have fabricated it at locally and it's working well after seven year of its installation in the wastewater stabilization ponds in the natural environmental conditions and it's work very well next please for assess technology for this we collect the wastewater from any unit from an industry characterize it then we according to the characteristics of wastewater according to the level of pollution according to the quantity of pollution according to the type of pollution we select the plants and bacteria then inoculate the plants with these specific bacteria for example if there is hydrocarbon then we apply hydrocarbon degrading bacteria to the plants then vegetate these plants in the mat and cover the surface of the mat with silent gravel to protect the mat from the sunlight sun radiation then we shift these mat in the water and connect these mat with each other to make a island to make a floating wetland next please for the first time in pakistan this technology was applied in faisalabad city for the remediation of sewage and industrial wastewater here are the ponds which having both sewage as well as industrial wastewater we treated the plants such as typha phragmites canna mercaria matica and leptococcus leptococcus and then put the soil and shift these mats in the ponds and we also inoculate the plants with a specific plant growth promoting and and pollutant degrading bacteria next please we applied this we applied the floating treatment wetlands in three ponds and each pond had 10000 square feet floating treatment wetlands and according to our knowledge it's the maximum size of the floating wetland applied, applied at a site at a specific site it is the maximum amount of the floating wetlands that is 30000 square feet were applied in the faisalabad city for the remediation of sewage and industrial wastewater because this for these pontons contains both sewage as well as industrial wastewater next please you can see that there is lot of vegetation above the mat similarly there are roots below the mat and the roots below the mat are removing the pollutants from the wastewater by filtration by absorption by absorptions by sedimentation and improving the quality of the wastewater next please very interestingly we can also vegetate flowering flowering plants such as canna and rose to increase the beauty of the site it is very interesting to observe that below the mat there are wastewater and above the mat there are the flowers 
it really increased the beauty of the site. And it looks very good, amazing that there are the flowers are growing on the wastewater. Next, please. There was significant reduction in COD and BOD. COD is chemical oxygen demand and BOD is biochemical oxygen demand. COD indicating the presence of total oxidizable material in the wastewater. Total oxidizable material COD indicate. There is biochemical oxygen demand indicating the presence of biodegradable material in the wastewater. In COD measure both organic and inorganic oxidizable material in the wastewater and BOD near the biodegradable. We can see that by the application of the technology, there was significant reduction in COD, BOD, and also the heavy metals such as chromium and RN and neutron, nitrogen, and phosphorus in the outlet wastewater as compared to the inlet wastewater. There may be some other factors also involved such as the sedimentation, natural biodegradation, we have to take place along with the performance of our applied wetlands. Next, please. We also analyze the wastewater by laser and use breakdown spectrophotometry. And we found there was less amount of in nine pollutants in the wastewater. There was less concentration of in, inorganic pollutants, inorganic elements in the outlet wastewater as compared to the inlet wastewater. Again here, our wetlands are removing the pollutants, these inorganic pollutants from the wastewater in addition to the sedimentation and other process involves naturally in these ponds to remove the, these contaminants from the wastewater. Next, please. Our this work was published in Nature Sustainability. And most importantly, our wetland was published on the front page of this journal. And moreover, all the work published in this journal performed in Pakistan, First and corresponding author was also from the Pakistan. Next, please. Next, please. Our these activities are back, please. Okay, uh, these are our activities are highly, highly appreciated in national and international newspapers, such as BBC Urdu, Vaga of America, and English and local language newspapers, and almost all TV channels are appreciated over these efforts to apply this green technology in Pakistan for wastewater treatment. Please. We, uh, we also applied this technology for the remediation of crude oil polluted wastewater at oil exploration sites. Oil exploration and extraction activities always produce wastewater. This wastewater contains very high concentration of crude oil and other pollutants such as the heavy metals chloride and sulfates. And crude oil also con consists of the hydrocarbons. And this is the pit at in District Chakwal, Punjab, Pakistan. This wastewater detergent pit forms having area of 14,000 square feet. And here we apply 10,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet floating treatment wetlands in this pit. And vegetated different plants such as typha, Pegmice, Astralis, Canandica, Lecaria Matica, and Flecta Fusca. 
And we also applied the consortiums of 10 different material stains, having hydrocarbon degradation and plant growth promoting activities. And according to the, our knowledge, for the very first time, floating treatment wetland applied for the remediation of crude oil polluted wastewater in a such area in a pit in a waste resistant basin pond. Next, please. Here we vegetated different plants in the floating mat. And these then these melt shifted in the pits, connected with each other to develop the island. And then we also apply the bacteria to the plants as well as in the pit. These bacteria having hydrocarbon degrading and plant growth promoting activities. This wastewater is does not contain nitrogen and phosphorus. So we add DAP and urea to support the growth of plants and the bacteria in the pit as crude oil contaminated water at oil exploration, the wastewater which is produced at oil exploration sites does not have nitrogen and phosphorus. So we add DAP fertilizer and urea fertilizer to enhance the plant growth and bacteria population and their degradation activity in the pit. Next, please. And after the application of only three months, the water was cleaned. This is mainly due to the biodegradation of the hydrocarbons by the inoculated bacteria, as well as the absorption and absorption of the hydrocarbons on the road surface. And due to biodegradation as well as absorption, absorptions, hydrocarbons, crude oil was removed from the wastewater. And our this work was published in NPG Clean Water Nature. Next, please. There was more than 97% hydrocarbon degradation and 89% COD and 92% BOD. These reduction BOD, BOD and are mainly due to the biodegradation activity of the microorganism, mainly by the inoculated bacteria. Whereas TDS, total dissolved solids, chlorides, sulfates, copper, iron, chromium, these inorganic proteins are mainly removed by the sedimentation and the absorption of these, <coughs> these by the plants. Mainly, there is sedimentation take place, took place and remove these inorganic proteins from the wastewater. Next, please. After four years of the application of the wetlands in District Chakwal, Punjab, we visited the site. And we were very happy to see that there are the birds living in these plants. In these wetlands, there are the birds are living and these bird, birds are also playing in this water. Then we collected this water, this waste water and bring in the lab and found that it is COD, BOD and all other proteins were almost removed from the, from the water. And this way water is completely cleaned. And the other things we observed that among five vegetative plants, only pregmites show the maximum growth and all other plants but not there. And only few brands of uh, Leptocola fusca were observed there. This means that the other plants, if, within one year, all other plants are growing, but after four years, only 
recognized for growing they are. And all others were finished. Next, please. Next, please. <clears throat> Then we also applied this technology at other side of the same company. Back please, sorry. Then we also applied this technology on other, on other side, same company that the clinic gas plant district attack Punjab in 2021. And here we invited the only fragment disasters and inoculated the plants and the wastewater with specific hydrocarbon degrading bacteria. And within two and three months, most of the pollutants from the wastewater were removed. Next, please. Then we also applied protein treatment wetlands in a textile industry interloop limited Faisalabad for the remediation of dye-rich textile effluent. Here we tested all the four plants, Typha, Rigmiles, uh, Leptocola fusca, and Bricaria. And we found here again, Rigmite Arsus is performing better than the plants. And our work, this work was published in General of Cleaner Production. Next, please. The vegetation, the micro, the thanks, hemming, protein wetlands with vegetation, remove the COD color and TDS. And their pollutants, their removal, and these pollutants removal was enhanced by the inoculation of the bacteria, by the inoculation of the in these wetlands. In the Getting that plant pre partnerships is more suitable approach to remove these contaminants from the wastewater. Next, please. There are millions of car wash stations. <coughs> Sorry. In Pakistan and many other countries. These car wash stations use clean water and sometimes the drinking water for car washing, vehicle washing, and, and discharge the wastewater without any treatment. Here, we, we develop the floating treatment wetlands and, and, and the, some constructed wetlands by plants. We have wet the, developed the wet, floating wetlands in 20 tanks, each tank having 1,000 liter capacity. The transition time of waste each tank is about five days. After passing these 20 tanks having floating wetlands and constructed wetlands, the water quality was improved. And this treated water is being fully reused for the same application for the question. Next, please. Here you can see that both COD, BOD, TDS, total suspended solid, total dissolved solid, detergents, and oil and grease were significantly removed from the wastewater. And the treated water is being used, and there's no bad effects on the on the on the on the on the cars washed by this this treated water. So they are continuously using this treated, treated water for the same application that is for car washing. Next please. Then the same company Toyota at the on the other showroom that is Toyota Chinab Motors. 12 the pounds in the soil, concrete pound in the soil and applied there. We applied there both floating wetlands and then and then constructed wetlands to clean the water. And again here, all the pollutants 
oil detergents here again is 20 pounds and in all these pounds and then the last slide the, the wastewater pass by gravity and there and there again here is also the, all the treated water is being reused again for car washing next please Recently, we applied this technology, floating treatment wetland and constructed wetlands at interloop container wash station at Khanewal, district Khanewal, Punjab, for wastewater treatment and reuse. Here again, we applied Rigmas Australis to develop the floating wetlands and constructed wetlands, and also vegetated some at some places, Kenna, to improve the to improve the beauty of the site. Next, please. We have also developed floating treatment wetland system at Hadri Beverage in Islamabad, our capital city, to treat the sugar rich wastewater water. We get about 60 70% COD and BO detection. Actually, here is the initial concentration is very high, about 3,000 milligram per liter. So 60-70% still significant reduction in COD, BOD, and hopefully we will optimize it more, and then we will apply it at full scale for the remediation of sugar-rich beverage wastewater. Next, please. We also applied at pilot scale at Christian Chemical Industry in Srigoda district for the remediation of its wastewater at pilot scale. Next, please. We also applied at Manak village in district Lahore, one of the main city of Pakistan, district Lahore and capital of the Punjab for sewage wastewater treatment. A significant pollution reduction and treated water is being reused for the irrigation as well as for the fish farming. The application of this technology, putting wetland in this village wastewater to the site, to the beauty of the site, as well as remove the organic and inorganic nutrients from the wastewater and the treated water is, is now being reused for the irrigation as well as for the fish farming. Next, please. More recently, we have applied this technology in irrigation cloning in district Jorabad for the remediation of this cloning with wastewater. And after the growth of the plants, we hope that there will be significant reduction in both organ and inorganic proteins from the wastewater. Next, please. Now we are planning to apply this floating wetland technology in Aghuwat University, District Sur, Punjab, Pakistan, for the remediation and reuse of hostels as well as offices of this university wastewater. And hopefully by applying this technology here, we will be able to replicate this technology in other university of the Pakistan for the remediation of their wastewater. And we also made the sedimentation ponds. And then from there, we will collect wastewater here and we apply the floating wetlands to remove the contaminants from the wastewater. Next, please. Small medium enterprises such as car washing, beverages, livestock, hotels, restaurants, offices are the main end user of this technology. And we have also have some uh, we are planning to apply this technology in some restaurants and the hotels 
and is also useful to apply in the oil industry because most of the oil exploration companies explore extract the oil in remote area in the hilly area where there is the application of conventional treatment based on plant is difficult they more normally the water in the fish and it's easy to install the protected wetland technology in these pits in these ponds for the remediation of waste water environment protection agency wasa water and sanitation agency can install this technology to clean the sewage waste water and also irrigation department can apply to treat this waste water and mix it with the canal water for the irrigation purpose the world wide fund for nature pakistan already applying this technology at various sites and most important residential colonies i hope in the next in the future most of the colony or all colony will adopt this technology to clean their sewage water next please Photoreceptor wetland has been recognized as the innovative technology by Pakistan by Pakistan Council of Science and Technology. More recently, Higher Education Commission, Government of Pakistan, awarded a grant of Rs. 6.2 million under Technology Transfer Support Fund for the marketing, commercialization, and application of this technology in Pakistan. Next, please. <clears throat> We are highly thankful to International Foundation of Science for providing the funds used to start this work, which was used to develop this technology at lab scale. Then three grants from the Higher Education Commission, which is used to upscale at pilot scale this technology, and Water and Sanitation Agency, Basa Faisalabad, provide the as well as. Their ponds supported us to apply this technology in their ponds. Telugu Limited Faisalabad for pilot scale project and oil and gas development company Pakistan provided the funds and and a lot of and supported us very much to apply this technology in their pits. And they are interested that this technology will be applied in other their wastewater sewage ponds. Toyota Airport Motor Faisalabad, World Wild Fund for Nature, WWF Pakistan, because though they are promoting and also applying this technology at different sites in Pakistan. Next, please. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very much, Afsal. This is a very interesting, very interesting presentation and, and um, I was amazed by by the diversity of the projects that, uh, that you all have, you. you know, to apply this technology. Um, real quick, we have several several questions that have uh, popped up in our question and answer screen. Um, once again, if there's anyone that uh, wants to pose a question, please enter it now. If you cannot, we don't have time to answer the question, then You'll have Asal's email here in the, from the, this um, presentation, and you can you can email the presenta presenter directly. Um, regarding the, I guess uh, one question that was posed, and it regards the diversity of projects you have. Um, we is this technology has it been? I think uh, has it been. Exported to any any other um, countries in, in in your region as as uh, are there no. that, that use this technology no. um, only in Pakistan. Okay, we use this technology only in Pakistan. There's um because we are, because our institute is a part as a public is government organization. So we uh, only work in the, within the country. And now we are actually only transferring this technology to a industrial partner, to a company. 
and hopefully that company will in the future will uh, apply this technology in Pakistan and in other, maybe in other countries to clean the wastewater. Okay. Um, on a, uh, regarding the, regarding your um, industrial partners, uh, there's a question uh, mm -hmm. about, I guess, uh, it, it kind of, it, it, um, it relates to the um, regulation of the industry, re the regulation of industry's wastewater. And um, do your waste, do your partners in industry, are they compelled to use this technology mm -hmm. or are they required to in, in any way um, treat the wastewaters that they, that they create? And if so, I mean, if they have this available, would they prefer this type of technology? So uh, that actually not industry, that is a company. That company with the help of NIPCHI, they apply with NIPCHI My Institute. With, with the help of My Institute, our guidance will apply this technology at different industries and different government organization. Because as, as a as a government employee, we have some limitation. But that comp that private company will be will have more uh, funds and other things to promote, advertise, and then apply this technology at different industries, industries at industries and government organizations. They have more contact with. They, they actually they, that company have already uh, connect relation with most of the industries. Uh, uh, that's actually uh, help the industries. That company is actually the manufacturing com uh, industrial construction development company. And they have already links relation with almost all of the industries. So hopefully the next few years, this technology will be applied at several new sites, new industry, to remove the organic and both in the organic contaminants from the wastewater. Okay. Um, we have some specific questions okay. regarding some of the, the plants and the bacteria that, um, that are used. Um, one, one question um, uh, regards the um, mm -hmm. use of, of cattails, typha, and since they propagate yeah, by yeah. The question was, how do new shoots emerge in, from, the, uh, from the mats? I'm, I'm assuming that this question, uh, the, the individual asking this question is um, probably, probably is, is envisioning a, a barrier to emergence through the, the mat. Is, does the mat cause um, any type of, um, you know, barrier for the emergence of, of, of rhizomes from cattails? Uh, actually, we make the hole in the mat. And below the mats, roots were grown. And above the mat, also some plants were also came out. But that above and they also cross the cross the mat and become out of the mat, but still the mat is working well. Yes, they this uh, uh, did not uh, the weak the mat. And is the, that right? I might have to urge the the individual that asked a question to to email. For, for clarification, just to make certain that she's okay. satisfied with your answer. Um, okay. I do have a couple of questions regarding the bacteria. And um, one of them seems to mm -hmm. think that, or one of them asks, what type of, how do you choose the bacteria? And then another question, related question, uh, regards the use of um, bacteria that may, uh, be, be used by um, 
plants like legumes to, um, you know, for that would form nodules, you know, and, and something like rhizobium. Um, and and uh, but over or just in general, what what type of bacteria do you prefer for inoculation into your mats? Okay, these are bacteria mainly associated from the same plants, from the same mostly from the typha, from the pygmies, from the roots of these plants, and the, inside the root and shoot. So these may are the rhizo bacteria, rhizosphere bacteria, yanike mean bacteria which colonize on the roots. These are the mainly bacteria are known as rhizo, rhizospheric bacteria. And other bacteria we have associated inside from the inside the root and shoot, that's known as endophytic bacteria. We use both these two types of the bacteria, which were associated from the same plants. From the root and shoot of the these two three plants, we collected them from the, we associated them and characterized them for their specific root and degradation and plant growth promoting activities. Then these bacteria were reused. Then these bacteria were reinoculated in the in the in the in the in the plants, in the mares and the wastewater. And we checked that these bacteria again very well colonized on the roots as well as in the root and shoot of the plants. Because they were, actually these were isolated from the same plant and again re-inoculated, so they show the better uh, uh, persistent survival as well as the activity, as well as the degradation of the, uh, of the organic proteins and also showing the plant growth, growth promoting activity. Excellent. Normal flora. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, yes, normal, yes, normal flora, yes, yes. Oh gosh, you know, I have so many questions, and there, 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 are many left, and I, I really apologize for those whose questions cannot be answered, um, immediate or in this in this forum. But please, please forward yours to Afsal, and um, I'd like to say thank you once again, Afsal. This is a uh, very thought provoking. And, and really have enjoyed this, this presentation. Um, I, I, if I could ask for um, our panelists to, to forward the, the slide, I would just like to um, close with a couple of, of um, announcements. Yeah, yes, please. Or, uh, for one, our, our next English, SWS webinar will be held August 19th, 2021, presented by yeah. Jillian Davis, who will be presenting the work of integrating wetlands into holistic nature-based planning projects. Next Spanish webinar will be held on September 22nd and will be presented by Dr. Sergio Salinas Rodriguez, speaking about climate resilient environmental flows, theory, practice, and outlook on a cl changing climate in Mexico. As a reminder, all Spanish webinars are offered free of charge to members and non-members. Um, please advance. And finally, to be sure, be sure you subscribe or follow SWS social media channels like Facebook and LinkedIn, LinkedIn to keep informed about the society. If you're a member, please check out our webpage at sws.org and find out how to become a member and to get all the benefits of membership in SWS. We also have YouTube a YouTube channel where our webinars are posted three months after the original broadcast, once again, with multilingual subtitles and newly added over the past year are our wetland interviews, two in English, three in Spanish, which are posted to our YouTube page. You can quickly find links to those on the SWS website under the resources tab by selecting wetland interviews. And if you're Spanish speaking, be certain to subscribe to the Latin American Caribbean Regions Facebook page at the link listed here. Um, please forward. I'd just like to close also by thanking Afsal again for the wonderful presentation to our sponsors and to you, Thank the you. audience, for participating today.